What turned out to be a night of high expectation, I was beginning to wonder if things were going to work at all. My goal was the Horsehead Nebula using narrow band filters, but the filters, well one of them particularly, just didn't want to cooperate. But in the process, I ended up with perhaps my best image ever. How did I do that? Welcome to Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. I do a lot of astrophotography right here in my backyard garden, and I call it the Heavenly Backyard Garden. And the equipment that I'm using for this particular project is the Eon 130mm triplet telescope as a refractor telescope. I have the 0.8x reducer attached to the system, and that brings the focal length down to around 780 millimeters, somewhere around there. It's up on the screen. Anyway, uh, the uh, camera that I'm using is the uh, ZWO 1600 MM Pro. It's a monochrome camera and I have on the uh, filter wheel, one and a quarter inch filter wheel and with that I have the uh, hydrogen alpha, I have the uh, uh, sulfur 2 and the oxygen 3 and a UV IR cut uh, filter for luminance and that was the goal using these uh, filters to produce a Hubble palette picture. In other words, a uh, sulfur, hydrogen alpha, and oxygen 3 uh, image, SHO. <laughs> but it just didn't seem to want to work out that way, particularly in the oxygen. Well, the idea in astrophotography is to beat Murphy's Law. And that law, number one, states that if anything can go wrong, it will. And there are so many things that just can go wrong in astrophotography. You know, a lot of times we never get a perfect night of astrophotography. Things usually uh, go wrong in a little bit different ways or sometimes in a big different way. Uh, with all the different equipment I have attached to the telescope, I have the computer. It's a full Windows 10 computer and I have uh, my USB 3s and two ports uh, plugged in with the camera, uh, the guide camera, uh, the focuser, the uh, uh, what else I have on there. I got the dew heaters. Uh, everything is on there. Uh, has an attachment and the computer can fail. Even the connection to the mount, the EQR6 Pro, uh, that could go wrong. Uh, a lot of times things do work okay, but a lot of times they don't. And one of the things that I really didn't expect to see go wrong was the results of the filter, particularly the O3 filter. And when I stacked it, I was dismayed at the Bright Star Elnatac, which is part of the belt of Orion right there by the Flame Nebula. It didn't come out round at all. It was a square star. I mean, uh, the star actually looked like a square, so I had to work around that. And the results, well, actually, let's take a look. So where is Orion in the sky? Well, let's take a look at Stellarium, and it's in this area here of the sky. I'm looking toward the south, southeast at this moment in time, and turning on some of the features in Stellarium, there's the outlines of the constellations and their names, and there's the great Orion um, constellation, Orion the Hunter, and over here, Procyon, the uh, lesser dog, Canis Minor, and over here you have Canis Major, uh, and Sirius, of course, the, the dog star or the bright star. But anyway, the uh, Horsehead Nebula is in this area right over here. So let's zoom in on that. And well, uh, among other things, you do have the Orion Nebula right here. Uh, you have the Horsehead Nebula here, the flame. Uh, over here, uh, you have M78 or Casper the Ghost Nebula. Uh, the um, uh, Rosette nebulas in this area as well, but uh, let's go in more on the um, Horsehead nebula there it is right there you can see a large amount of nebulosity in this area here There's the horsehead itself and uh, one of the stars of the uh, belt of Orion those three stars there uh, And that's Alnitak and that's that bright star over in the flame nebula So there you have it in the uh, Stellarium. So let's take a look at what I saw in um, my setup in uh, Nina. Well, here's my setup in Nina and there you can see the horse head right there but I wanted to get the flame as well with the uh, my camera settings right here. So um, I can move this over to here and use these coordinates uh, for the uh, setting. I want to make sure I get this star here. That's Sigma Orionis 
Uh, that's the star that's illuminating all this uh, nebulosity over here. And of course, that's Alnitak of uh, the uh, belt of Orion and the Flame Nebula. And of course, the horse head right here. So this is the uh, setting I'm using in Nina. And I set my sequence to that with the uh, um, different filters that I use. So let's take a look at the results of that. So let's take a look at the products. First of all is the hydrogen alpha data, and that's it right there. It, it came out pretty nice, and you can see Alden Attack there is almost circular. It's got a little bit of a square you can see around it there. But uh, let's go back into now and see the others. And we have the uh, Sulfur 2, and a little bit more squarish on that star there. Uh, but the rest of the data looks pretty good. All right. Now, the uh, Oxygen 3. Look at that. It looks like a big square in the sky. I don't know what happened there, uh, why the Oxygen 3 did that, but uh, uh, I, don't think it's, I, I don't think it's the filter itself. I just don't know why. But, but anyway, that bl blue light was very strong. And of course, Oxygen 3 is very dominant in the blue color. And uh, here's the luminous, and it's nice and round right there. Uh, it looked very good and big halo as, as well. And, uh, but there you can see all the other um, nebulosity and the stars, pinpoint stars. I mean, they're, they're very good uh, pinpoint stars. That Eon is a really nice telescope itself. All right. Now, let's take a look at, uh, I, uh, I did something else. I took the um, hydrogen and the sulfur, and these two, I blended them together uh, by just adding uh, half of each of one to the other uh, in pixel math and came up with this. Uh, so let's start blending these things around and see what happens. And the first one I did uh, was the, uh, uh, the the Hubble palette, SHO, sulfur, uh, hydrogen, and oxygen. And here's the result of that. And I already took some of the green out of it, but uh, it's, it's a little bit more round. I mean, you still see that square there, so... Uh, yeah, this is okay, but I'm not happy with it. So let's go to the uh, let's sulfur, uh, hydrogen, and luminance. See how that looks. And instead of using the oxygen, I used the luminance for the blue. And um, not that much of a difference there, you can see. Uh, not that much of a difference. Um, so let's try another combination. The, the blend of the uh, sulfur and the hydrogen, and then the hydrogen alpha for the uh, green and then the luminance for the blue. And let's take a look. Well, that looks better. Um, it really brings out that blue though, don't you think? Uh, in, in the star, and these stars are hot. Uh, and, and, and we're gonna talk about that in a minute. But they're, they're very hot. And uh, looking at the uh, uh, Sigma, Alpha, uh, Sigma Orionis, the uh, double star here, you can see it's blue as well. Uh, another very hot star. Um, all right, moving along. Uh, let's go to our next, the blend. Let's see, I have the hydrogen alpha and then for the red, then the blend and the, um, which is the sulfur and hydrogen, and then the uh, luminance for the blue. So let's see how that looks. Mm, better. Uh, I've seen more of the reddish and golds in the uh, luminosity around the horse head itself, and the uh, Alnitak looks nice and blue, um, and uh, Sigma Orionis, that looks uh, good and blue as well. All right. Let's, um, uh oh, I move this. There we go. Um, and then try the uh, hydrogen sulfur luminance. See how that looked. Now that, that doesn't look too bad at all. And uh, you can still see that big halo, obviously. <laughs> Nothing I can do about that at the moment. But uh, there you can see uh, the uh, Sigma Orionis. Sigma, Sigma Orionis. Uh, and then Aldatac and the horse set itself here. Um, all right, let's do um, some geometry on there and flip it like we usually see it. Um, so I did a 90 degrees left, and th there you have it right here. And that doesn't look too bad. Now, I took this and I passed it through Photoshop. I'm gonna move it over here. And uh, let's take a look. Now, I think I maybe overdid it a little bit here. That's a bit bright, don't you think? A um, lot of reds there. I mean, it looks pretty good. It looks pretty good, but it's a lot of red. Um, I, I think I overdid it there. So what I did in um, PixInsight is I took these two images and I added them together, half of this and half of that, uh, and I came up with this. What do you think? 
I can live with this. I mean, I really like this a lot. So I don't know. This, this one or this one. Let me get my mug out of the way here. Or this one right here. I don't know. Which one? Which one can we take? Good question. That one looks good. I think I overdid it on this one. But this one, that looks good. I'm going to have to go with this one right here. I like this one a lot. So, <sighs> okay. Oh, I saw something while I was in um, setting up my um, images for stacking. I went into Blink, which is a, a nice little program here in, in PixInsight. And um, I, um, this is the luminance. And let's let's bring it up to here. Keep an eye on this little thing. I don't know what this is. I didn't find it in any of the other ones. It must have been a passing satellite, I guess. Well, let's take a look at it. We'll animate it there. See how it's moving? Let me zoom in on it a little bit. Can I pull it? This is a 15 minute exposure, a 30 seconds, um, 30, 30 second exposures. Got something there, I don't know what it was. <laughs> but there it is, I just wanted to show it to you. Okay, it's enough of that nonsense. All right, let's just stop this. All right, okay. Now, let's, uh, let's take a look. What is, you know, what is all this stuff? Yeah, what is this star here, Alnatac? What is this one up here, Sigma Orionis? Uh, what's causing all this red? Why are these striations? So let's take a look at that. The Flame Nebula, also known as NGC or New General Catalog 2024 or Shapeless uh, 277. It's an emission nebula about 1,500 light years away. Alnatac is that bright blue star uh, just off to the uh, upper right of the uh, nebula. It's about 1,260 light years away. Now, Alnatac is about 33 times as massive as our sun, and it has a temperature of 29 and a thousand degrees Kelvin. That's extremely hot. Our sun is 5,778 degrees Kelvin. So yeah, that's extremely hot. And the age of this star is only about 6.4 million years. Sounds old, our sun is 4.6 billion years, so this is a very young star. Now the flame consists of great clouds of hydrogen gas. Additional non-illuminated dust or gas in front of the nebula obscures the bright light of the emitted uh, nebulosity. There are several bright newly formed stars within this area. Now the Horsehead, also known as Bernard 33, is about 1,375 light years away. Color images revealed a deep red color that originates from the ionized hydrogen gas, or hydrogen alpha in the imagery, predominantly behind the nebula and caused by the nearby bright star Sigma Orionis. Now Sigma Orionis is the bright star above the head of the Horsehead and it's about 1,264 light years away and its temperature 31,000 degrees Kelvin. Again, that's hotter than the 29,000 of Alnatac and um, way hotter than our sun, just under 6,000 degrees Kelvin. And it's about 18 solar masses. Above the horse's head are magnetic fields which channel the gases, producing stresses within the nebula, uh, shown as foreground streaks against the background stars. The darkness of the horse head is caused mostly by a thick layer of dust blocking the light of the stars behind it. The gaseous complex is an active site of formation of low mass stars. Bright spots in the horse's nebula's base are young stars just in the process of forming. I remember in my earlier years training for broadcasting uh, in the radio aspect of it, the number one rule was learn the board, learn how to operate the equipment that you have. The same thing goes with astrophotography, learn the equipment that you have to work with. That means learning the different uses of the software and how to combine the different images and so forth. And there's just so much to learn uh, when going into astrophotography. 
It's just not going outside, pointing the camera at the sky, and then clicking a picture. No, it takes many hours to get these pictures. And then after the telescopic work is done, then inside work has to begin with the software and the stacking the image, the processing of the image, and then massaging the image, and then the final output of the image. So it, it, it all comes together as a lot of work involved in these projects. Uh, it, it just doesn't take like a 30 second exposure. No, no, it takes much more than that. So, you know, if you like what you're seeing, go ahead and hit the like button. If you like the image at the end, I liked it, uh, hit the like button. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing to my page. You know, I do a lot of astrophotography right here in my own backyard, and I show the ups and downs of astrophotography uh, on a, you know, homeowner, a local homeowner, a local amateur like you and like me. And uh, I also would like to thank all the more than 3,000 subscribers already uh, looking at my channel. So that's a big thank you to all of you. Now remember, why do I do this? The sky, the heavens are filled with majestic glories all around you and all near you and all in the sky near you. So unless you need rain or snow, and why would anybody want snow? It, clear skies, everyone. <laughs>